ಪ್ರಧಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಪದ್ಮಾವತಿ ಮಹಿಳಾ ವಿಶ್ವವಿದ್ಯಾಲಯ I take this offer and also enrich the knowledge of our students. I'm very happy to share that with you. Thank you, Madam. I invite his father from Germany, who is going to address us today on this special occasion. Thank you, sir, for making this occasion wonderful with your presence. I take this opportunity to invite Dr. I am very happy to invite Aliyam Gandhi's study and I have to propose by sir with the uh, uh, Tata Institute of Cancer and sir was the one who suggested and thank you sir for that wonderful gesture of yours. and I ask a very warm welcome to all the staff students from different departments and uh, a special thank welcome to sri ashok garu and tere uh, ಮಹಿಳಾ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಿಟಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ 
Yen students of Padmavati Mahila University. Also, welcome to all of you to this very present morning. As the president already dis described how beautiful this morning is. So I welcome you formally to this event, which we have arranged in, you know, in association with uh, three foundations, Academy of Guardian Studies, Gandhi King Foundation, and also a guest from you know, Gandhi Information Center from Germany. And I mean, this day is exclusively, I mean, we I mean, many for students, as we thought. As I was uh, sharing with our uh, you know, guests, today happens to be the last working day for this semester. Many of our students, they left the campus for the certification. So we are missing many of our students. With two apologies, I think, you know, I, we will carry out this program. Those who are very, very enthusiastic to be part of this program. Well, I'm not the right person to say many things about Mahatma Gandhiji. I know one thing, Mahatma Gandhiji is the legendary, legendary forever. See, you know, he is the one who, I mean, who inspired the entire nation's legacy throughout, you know, the nation which made us proud Indians. And I'm so happy to have these, you know, distinguished girls with us to share their views. I mean, to share, it is like a message from the Gandhian uh, thoughts. I think three of them, Dr. Prasad, Dr. Mr. Sri Gopal Krishnan, and also Dr. Kristin, I'm sure they, their messages is a very, very, you know, enlightening one to, uh, I mean, take a concrete, you know, values and, you know, ethical concerns regarding the life in general and also as students, especially this is this is for students. See, I think you know if you um, some of you can remember, Gandhiji has always always I mean has faith in youth, the the power of youth. In the nation development he was so confident in, in uh, promoting the values among the youth because it is a youth which can save this nation, which can move this nation, which can take this nation forward. So with this, especially that is with discipline, that is with value, inculcation, so youth can make wonders to make this India beautiful, to make this India more vibrant, and make this India more visible across the globe. I'm sure the Gandhian values, the Gandhian philosophy, the Gandhian ideology, the Gandhian life experiences, the Gandhian qualities are very, very important, you know, to know and to imbibe as part of our life. It is not big, even if I'm, I'm 64 years, I'm sure I have to learn many things about Gandhiji. Thank you so much. I take this opportunity to welcome our guests once again on behalf of Sri Padmavati Mahila University. And it is a pleasant you know, experience to have you with us in the security of Academy of Gandhi Studies. A person who has been associated with Sri Padmavati Mahila Visvamitya since its inception, and as you have stepped into the young adulthood or the early adulthood, as Madam as a developmental psychologist often says, he has grown with us. He has grown with the university and he has grown along with, and I would say we have grown along with him in our journey, especially from the Department of Social Work. I'm sure that Sandra has more to say about him. Now I request Dr. Sharda to give a profile, a brief profile now. She will go by to give a brief profile of uh, the Gopal Krishnan Gopal is a development professional who completed his master's in social work from the Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai. He has, to his credit, over 35 years of experience in the development sector. 
He also served as coordinator at Gandhi Peace Center till 1994. He also is a member of the core team spearheading the anti fiscal anti fiscal movement and anti blue revolution, which is the still farming uh, in Andhra Pradesh during the early 90s. In the last two decades, he led different studies being conducted on the situation of trafficking and the impact of occupational migration among fisher homes in Andhra Pradesh. He is active in evaluation of watershed and climate change projects. His strength has been networking of NGOs spread over different districts and states, and he has been working together with NGOs on several issues, including child trafficking and HIV AIDS, disaster management, natural resource management, health, migration, drought, and whatnot. I, I, I can give a list of the activities sir is involved in. Not a single thing is left out. Despite his contribution to the societal issues, sir has been written of authoring several books, and to name a few, a study of status of environment, status of environment in Andhra Pradesh, published in 1990s, a study on occupational migration among fisher folk vis-a-vis -vis status of women and children in coastal districts, published in 1993, a study on commercial sex workers and their children in coastal Andhra Pradesh in 2002, and a study on areas of interest include strategization, monitoring, and learning. Environmental research and advocacy and lobbying. He is currently the executive director from member secretary of Academy of Gandhi Studies, an NGO established in 1976 under Society's Registration Act. The key interventions of the Academy of Gandhi Studies are peace initiatives, gender equality, health, environment, water and sanitation youth empowerment, child rights, and so on. Under his leadership, Academy of Gandhi Studies received India's specific award in the Solution Search context organized by the Great Earth and Nature Conservancy in U.S. in 2006-2013 for its success and leadership in climate adaptation. For his active involvement during DC Global he was also he also received momentum from the from uh, the previous uh, uh, chief minister, the Nara Chandrababu Naidu, and for the active involvement of APS during this DVC Mokana, and later for engagement in with the DVC community since. So uh, this, this is a very brief profile of the uh, Sri Gopal Krishna and. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that we will all be going to have a very good lecture from here. Thank you. Thank you, sir. That was a brief but a very robust profile of uh, Sri Gopal Kashyamati Gadi. A blend of an academician, a practitioner, and a researcher also. Thank you, sir, for being with us and we look forward to your research. Thank you, sir. Morning session, Professor Anurag Gari, Vice Chancellor uh, Professor Jamal Gari, my colleagues Prasad and the visiting luminary Dr. Professor Pratakov, Professor Nangas Gari, and uh, Professor. Uh, Anunar Gharu for no Sarva Gharu for a lavish presentation by the fact. Thank you all for giving me this opportunity to stand in front of you. How would you prefer? Would you like me to interact with you in Telugu or would you like me to talk to you in English? Ma, English ya, Telugu ya. 
హిందులో మాట్లాడమంటారు ఏ భాషలో మాట్లాడమంటారు ఎలా మాట్లాడుతున్నారు లేదు మనం కలిసి మాట్లాడుతున్నాం కలిసి మాట్లాడుతున్నాం ఆ విషయంలో నాకంటే మా ప్రొఫెసర్ ప్రసాద్ చాలా బాగా మీతో ఇంట్రాక్ట్ అవుతారు మీతో మాట్లాడిస్తారు కాదు బట్ ఫర్ ద టైమ్ బీ ఐ లైక్ యూ రీలీ కమ్ అప్ విత్ టూ త్రీ థింగ్స్ అండ్ ఐ కెన్ రీలీ టాక్ ఆన్ థ్యాంక్ యూ మనం ఈ అవకాశం ముందు మొట్టమొదటిగా ఈ అవకాశం ఇచ్చినందుకు ప్రొఫెసర్ జమిల్ గారికి ప్రశాంత్ మహిళా విశ్వవిద్యాలయం అండ్ శారద్ గారికి ఫర్ టేకింగ్ ఆల్ ది ఇనిషియేటివ్ అండ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ అనురాధ్ గారికి ముందుగా కృతజ్ఞతలు తెలుపుకుంటున్నాను అకాడమీ ఆఫ్ డాన్ స్టడీస్తో మా ప్రయాణం దాదాపుగా ఇరవై నాలుగు ఏళ్ళ వర్ష కొనసాగుతోంది చాలా కార్యక్రమాలు మేము చేసిన ఈ ఇరవై నాలుగు ఏళ్ళలో చేసిన కార్యక్రమాలలోనూ మహిళా విశ్వవిద్యాలయంతో కలిసి చేసిన కార్యక్రమాలు ఎన్నో ఉన్నాయి అనేక కార్యక్రమాలను మేము కలిసి ముందుకు వెళ్ళాం ప్రొఫెసర్ అనురాధ్ గారు చెప్పినట్టుగా ఇట్ వాస్ జర్నీ టుగెదర్ అండ్ వీ వర్క్ ఆన్ డిఫరెంట్ అదర్ ప్రాజెక్ట్స్ టుగెదర్ అండ్ ఇట్ వాస్ పర్టికులర్లీ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ సోషల్ వర్క్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ హ్యూమన్ స్టడీస్ అండ్ అదర్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్స్ టుగెదర్ బీట్ ఎ క్యాంపెయిన్ ఆన్ ఫస్ట్ డిసెంబర్ ఫర్ అగేన్స్ వర్ల్డ్ ఆన్ ఎ వర్ల్డ్ ఏజ్ డే విచ్ వాస్ ఆర్గనైజ్ ఐ థింక్ global campaign against uh, other and, and aids sometime they back in 2005 6 it was a wonderful campaign there in uh, university and all of us went to the road all the process on the day but in other works that we have done and studies also that professor uh, shadrar has indicated coming back to our prime area of focus for the day Gandhiji has been often misunderstood of late these days. With a lot of pain, in fact, when I was talking to Professor Jamal Dharam, she joined my journey in uh, the, to the same feeling that there had been a kind of an organized campaign against Mahatma Gandhi through particularly the Uh, electronic media of whatsapp and uh, various other possible uh, avenues i know why it is happening but it's unfortunate often he has been misunderstood let me first open a, a, a statement give one an open statement that if you want to understand gandhi you have to read gandhi without reading gandhi you cannot understand gandhi but making statements against him is absolutely a crime that apart one has to understand whatever be the political approach or academic approach or the philosophical approach that mahatma has it is based on this one particular indicates a chakra as such a agra agra means such a nation so such an agra means such for the truth the way he defines is recognizing truth by inflicting suffering on one's own self that's how he indicates it you make truth valid you make truth completely the platform but how do you do it you inflict suffering on one's own self not on others and that's why he indicated three important elements as his ayudas or weapons those three important weapons are called three ratnas such a frame yajna when he called yajna it means not the ritualistic yajna when he called yajna it means ahimsa or other in other words tyaga Tiyaga, it is the element that you have to really be willing to sacrifice, sacrifice your own self, 
sacrifice every part of your own self for the replenishment of truth. That's where he is. And these Vidatnas are the key elements that has led him to formulate his approach. And if you look into, critically analyze and look into the Ekadasa Sutras of Mahatma, which includes Aparigraha, Asteya, and all these elements together, it is nothing but what our yogic philosophy says of Yamaniyamas. These are the Yamaniyamas that one has to follow to realize one oneself. Yamaniyamas are very important for any individual to really start his spiritual growth. And Gandhiji initiated his growth with these Yamaniyamas of Ekadas Sutras. And that is the way that he has gone about and is a real yogi. Believe me, he was called Mahatma when he first entered in the movement against that Neel Mandu Ujjamu. After he was able to get right to him, Mahatma is to talk to him and talk to him and talk to him and talk to him and talk to him. आ मेरे बंदे नहीं तो लोग जो उन जैसे ना तो आकर मखमल सारे आने महात्मा ने दुखते ही चाहे करवा था the man who gave the cycle of महात्मा जो है ये जमीन का टाइगर who he realized that this is real महान आत्मन महात्मा means महान आत्मन the two elements very important elements you have that beyond reaching the beyond महान and आत्मन you have your own आत्मन सभी Soul being perceived not only in your own self and your soul being perceived throughout the world. The way he says about it is Atma Vatsarva Bhutan. In every element you have this soul being perceived. And that's how he looked at it and that's how his world has reached unreachable areas also without any problems. And that element of Mahatma is not really clearly understood. He talks about it that this universe is ruled by one rule. I hope you all agree with me. Now that I am here. If you want to know what is the truth, then what is the truth? If you want to know what is the truth, then what is the truth? If you want to know what is the truth, then what is the truth? If you want to know what is the truth, then what is the truth? वक्त सूत्र क्या होता है रेड सूत्र क्या होता है निकासी तो आपने वक्त सूत्र लूट रहा था ना नहीं विश्वास नहीं वक्त सूत्र में तो परिपालन में बढ़ता होता है रेड सूत्र क्या होता है परिपालन में बढ़ता होता है मैं जवाब चेक करा गति का मतलब डाली इंटर आंध्र का ना ना मैडम ने पति ने बोला गुरुवा� if you put Satya and Dalika and it's a different definition, I can use it in the Sat. I'll be able to give you a little bit of it. Sat and then what it means, that which exists is truth. Truth and it will be Sat and the Bhavan and Purtika. Sarir Pariyaya Pavan Kaka Kuvina Kuda. And it is a little bit of Sat and Truth and Purti Pavan Kaka. Chala, Chala Madhu Lokya Kadri. Manam Dishan Rilo Kadri is a very nice picture here. I am Vardhan Pada. अंदर ही नहीं चलता ना नहीं चलता ना डैक भी चेक्सेस इस तो ये देख रहे हैं मुन्ना तो आदि सब मुन्ना जी सब अनुनय तय थे ये विष्णु अंता वक्त सोते हैं तो परिपालन का पढ़ते ना बढ़ो आ मुन्ना जी सब तय का और ना परिपालन सोते हैं पर सब तय का ना आ सब तय मतलब सूत्र में परिपालन सोते ना तय थे आ सूत्र में आय सुपर एनर्जी ये देता हूँ तो ये देता हूँ सूत्र भरपाल इसका हूँ तो आधे भर गए भर गए तो भेद का लेडू नीतू नाम भेद का लेडू नीलों ने उन्ना लो मानों ने उन्ना लो अंदर ने लोगों ने उन्ना लो अंदर ने भाव ने पश्चिम ने लगा चुके दान ने प्रेमा ना भाव ने तो बुद्धि सिखला रहे निजेंगा रुझू चिया ले नटेते अंधुर चारों ओसरम प्रेम ओसर 
भविष्य
మనం కలిసి కోర్సెస్ నడుపుకోవడానికి అలాగే మహిళా యూనివర్సిటీకి మిగతా యూనివర్సిటీస్కి అనుబంధం ఏర్పడి మనం ఒక రిసర్చ్ ప్రాసెస్ ని ఇనిషియేట్ చేయడానికి ఒక ప్రాతిపదికన మనం ముందుకు అడుగు వేయడానికి మనం గాంధీ ఫౌండేషన్ తో ఒక ఒప్పందం ఉడంబడికలు మనం సిద్ధం చేసుకోవాలి అందుకు సిద్ధమైన బాగుంటుంది So with those few words, I think uh, it's time for me, but I would like certainly invite uh, Seek to have order. Uh, my team is both uh, Anurad Garu and as well as Professor Shana Garu, of course, uh, to the Vice Chancellor, Professor Jamal Garu, is to kindly select students with good communication skills. Let us have a workshop. Let us start the process of making them understand Gandhi. Let us give them the guidance. and we are me and prasad and prasad samshir prasad garu is also here and ashok garu is also here we are willing to really be guiding them and then helping them in understanding gandhi and in developing a workshop to really interact on gandhi ji and which can really help them question and come in as a after their candidature in the integration process of that are that are planned ahead Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. The profile about uh, Professor Prasad Garu. Professor Prasad is a Gandhi scholar and an active member of the Gandhi organization and Sarvodaya movement in India. I would like to be in the Supermarty Marina Association of Yale. So I thank Professor Sarvodaya Garu for giving me. We did in that too. Actually, he got all that was not necessary. If somebody should speak, the son will speak and will speak. Yeah. Uh, thank Dr. Uh, Anurag uh, Dhar, Dean School of Social Sciences, for his presenting of this function. And Honorable Dr. Jirana Dhar, the Vice Chancellor of the uh, Mount University, which has given us It's a great opportunity to come here and you have blessed us with your presence. And uh, Professor Mahal is going to be at School of, so School of Sciences and Professor uh, Samsa Prasad Gheru, former uh, uh, professor in head of the Department of Philosophy in SC University. And he's an outstanding Gandhi scholar. Uh, and my friend, Dr. Christian Walker, who came all the way from Germany, for doing a series of lectures all over the country. Then my very close friend, Gopal Krishnamurti, he made a lot of uh, things he mentioned, which uh, reduces my own burden. So I thank Gopal Krishnamurti for a very right uh, uh, kind of announcements. So I thank him and I thank everybody for uh, the opportunity and the day. And this program is organized on the occasion of Gandhi Jayanti, which is just the day after tomorrow. And I pay tributes to the father of the nation, who is a crusader against injustice in all forms, inspiration to many a social, environmental, equality movements around the world, and perhaps one of the greatest persons who is probably the Mahatma. I remember what famous scientist of the Ryan Seed said about Gandhi. I think that is the most appropriate and apt description of Gandhi. He said, I quote, <coughs> Generations to come, generations to come, it may be, will scarce believe that such a one as this ever in blood and flesh walked upon this earth. What a beautiful thing he has put it. And whenever I think about Gandhi, his work, I exactly think, well, is it humanly possible to do what he has done? Then, We have so many people who talk about Gandhi, who describe Gandhi. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a civil rights leader from the United States, 
who fought against the segregation, he said, Gandhi is inevitable. Gandhi is inescapable. And finally he said, we may ignore Gandhi at our own risk. So if we really look at the kind of work that he has done, it is something very, very amazing. But before I go into that, because I am standing in front of uh, all of you, the Padma of the Mahila University, I would like to focus a little bit on women, women in development. Jaira or Taka, I said, Mahan Rukhunana. More enthusiasm, no spirit. I am going to go
ಆ ಸಮಾಜದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತ್ರ ಗೆಲ್ಲ ಇಡೀ ಸಮಾಜ ಒಂದೇ ಗೆಲ್ಲುತ್ತಾರೆ ಮನಕಿ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಜಗನ್ ಗಾರಿ ಯೊಕ್ಕ ಆಧ್ವಾನಿಯಲ್ಲೂ ವಾಲಿಗೆ ಲೀಡರ್ ಸಿಗೋದು ಈ ವರ್ಷ ನಡೆಸ್ತಾರಂತೆ ಇಂತ ಒಂದು ಮಹಿಳೆ ತುಂಬಾಂತೆ ಸಿ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಹೋಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಂಟರ್ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಮತ್ತೊಂದು ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಐದೇ ಮಹಿಳೆಯು ಕೂಡ ತಯಾರಿಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ತಗೊಂಡ ಗಾಂಧಿ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಗುರುತು ಮಾತಾಡಲ್ಲ ಏನು ಸರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಎಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಸೂಚನೆ ಹೇಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದಿ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಎಸೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಮಹಾತ್ಮ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಸತ್ಯವೇನ ಸೂರ್ಯ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಸತ್ಯವೇ ಕಾದ ಅದು ಎಂತ ಸತ್ಯವೋ ಹುಟ್ಟಿದಕ್ಕೂ ಅಂದರ ಮಾನವರು ಅಂತ ಸಮಾನವೇ ನೀವು ಮಗುವಾಡಿ ಇರುವ ಆಡುವಾಡ ತಪ್ಪಿಗೆ ಹುಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆಡುವಾಡ ಇರುವ ಮಗುವಾಡ ತಪ್ಪಿಕೊಂಡು ಹುಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ನಾನು ಹುಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ <laughs> irrespective of caste creed religion color skin language gender all human beings are equal so this is the fundamental principle of gandhi has the laws enunciated then when we talk about non violence non violence is not an abstract term to be born in the books of philosophy but it is a term which can be applied to daily life like in the jeevan the no rose of the jeevan the no aspect of the aspect of the ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ಸ್ಟೆಸ್ಟಿಸೈಡ್ಸ್ಟಿಸೈಡ್ಸ್ಟಿಸೈಡ್ಸ್ಟಿಸೈ
లేదా దాని ఏమంటారు మన పెట్రోలియం బేస్డ్ ప్రొడక్ట్స్ సింథెటిక్ సింథెటిక్ ఇట్ ఆల్ ఆయిల్స్ వాయిల్స్ ఇన్ ది ఆర్థిక్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్స్ పిల్లలు కావడం అనే విషయాలు మెషిన్ గాన్ బ్యాంక్స్ యుద్ధము వాయిల్స్ జరిగితే ఆరు కూడా ఒక టీవీ ఏమో చేస్తుందో మన దగ్గర సినిమాలో చెప్తే హింస తప్పితే ఎంత బాగా ఫైట్ చూస్తే ఎంత భయంకర హింస ఉంటే అంత సినిమా హిట్ అయిపోతుంది కాబట్టి వాళ్ళకి జీవితాల్లో హింస అంత బాగా అయిపోయినప్పుడు హింస మరి మన మీద చూడలేని కూర్చుని ఎక్కడ ఏం చదువుతుంది రాణి ఇస్తు గారు అదే మన మీద వస్తే బేరే కావద్దు అలాగే మన యొక్క ఆలోచనలో హింస మన వాడే భాషలో హింస మన యొక్క చేతలలో హింస so we are no certification of violence unless we know that violent element in us we cannot become non violent person like mahatma gandhi we cannot see a non violent society and i talk about non violence gandhi has given a different kind of definition to violence and non violence it is not just talking about killing somebody with a knife or firing a pistol and all that so you may it is just a physical violence but there is more violence in the society which is not a bad form of violence but it is a lot of indirect form of violence that is a poverty is a form of violence is poverty a form of violence how do you say how do you see that is there anybody in this world who says that i want to remain poor nere bhigile kodu undali yaro kodunda yapadi kodunda na madamuddu property uddu ye uddu nan message aapu unda ye aapu na sarana so point it and there is nobody in this uh, who says i want to remain poor but the fact of life is that more than 50% of the world population is living under the poor why because there is a system operating which has a vested interest in keeping such a large population under such kind of political power either you know the uchchana ko vyavastha panjeshu So it is violence. Keeping people under bonds is violence. Children, they are working to earn a livelihood. And they are not going to school. They are not going to school. They are not playing. They are not enjoying. He is not violent against the children. So the point is that if you go on seeing like that, you can see that there are a lot of structural violences. There are a lot of structural violences. and i will take the example many of you are familiar with the bomb exchange on the other side of the sutra gram one dollar is getting better than this one dollar is equal to take it this so i take x in the rate you know this is a rate this is the same can anybody tell me here anybody can know this part who fixes that one dollar is equal to 80 indian rupees who is fixing that so i asked a question to some of my friends in america whether my 80 rupees my 80 rupees what can buy in india for that i can get a meal in this country may not be a star hotel but a reasonable hotel i can get a good meal for 80 rupees so what i can buy in 80 rupees in india can you or one dollar buy in america no so there is no panic so there is a mechanism where this particular exchange rate mechanism is a very informal or you can say it is a form of exploiting taking some countries rich taking some countries rich and what the forms is going to other countries and colonizing the whole british empire of india colonizing this country is an exploitation of looting and economic but after this colonization has come there almost now the new neo colonialism or the imperialist patterns have come 
So one question came, why did he step in here? Was it because of Mahatma Gandhi? I didn't know. British left India because they no longer needed to save this country. Because there had an enormous amount of uh, slavery in that. They made Indians slaves physically, but they, they dominated, they attacked three institutions. Indian agriculture, Indian medicine, Indian religion. And they converted all of us to Indian minds. They have become Western, Indian minds have become Western. One great historian, Dharam Malti, maybe some of you should be going here, he said by the turn of the century, there were over 100,000 black Englishmen. What a beautiful expert they are doing. They look Indian, but in thinking they are all Western. So this is what the British have done. So I said, British no longer needed to stay in this country because they were already enslaved all money. So what they have to do is they have to send Coca-Cola. They sent Coca-Cola, all of us drink Coca-Cola, and billions of dollars of Taiwan is siphoned from this country to those countries. Look at the domination. Now, because it's a women's university, I should like to ask you some questions. Are you going to ask? You can say, yeah, how are you going to ask? I think you will tell me that you will say, sorry, how are you going to ask? You can say, what are you going to ask? So, Aminapur lost everything, Hamad Devot lost his money. 
So from both the sides we are moving. So the loss is somewhere around 40 crores of rupees per annum per village. If we are having 13,000 villages in Andhra Pradesh, you can just imagine what the amount of rain that is going on. It is definitely more than the budget of the government of Andhra Pradesh. So is it not violence? Do you know how to solve the problem? What do you mean? Why is the most important thing? Why do we need to formalize? So what can we talk about? We talk about decentralization. We talk about sovereignty and solar. We talk about this very basic thing. Independence. We are the independent of all of us. Gandhi used the word Swadash, Swadash, self-rule, self-control, control of the mind, control of the passions, passions of greed, passions of superiority, passions of exploitation. Ali Gandhi did it. So, Manavad, Pattavadi, Mahila, Tala, Sahel, no. Amma, Manavad, Chala, Manavad, the whole thing, Manavad, 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 after that, on the credit system, Mahila University is more apt, more relevant. We will not have to talk about this in the future. We would like to spend some time, talk to the students here, the faculty here, and then we develop the kind of this, there is a whole population from this university. Our level of increase came up, we will connect with all the universities around the world, like in the Persian people, Stanford University, and like that. We will not have to connect with them. We are planning for the Gandhi Mandela team conference in South Africa. In the middle of 2019, we have sent 80 people to South Africa. One of them got a job in Accenture. Under the name of the business, his profile has been built. So I am very happy if some of you would like to come for the conference and that are okay, announce like that, and many people raise their hand. It is not it. We want those people to study for at least coming six months. We should be our experts. When we come to South Africa, we should be a leader. We should speak on the ground, on the society, on the problems of society, how we want to change the world. As the leader of this world, we must speak. So I will request Honorable uh, Vice Chancellor Dr. Dhanakar and other uh, faculty members here, the Dean of the School of Social Sciences and the school, Dean of the School of Sciences, to kindly consider to set up a kind of mechanism how we can ensure the students here to study Gandhi, to study society both. Please don't study Gandhi for the same Gandhi. No. No, no, no. He is not asking you to study Gandhi. If Gandhi is useful to you in your life, study Gandhi. And there is so much in Gandhi that you can learn. Wonderful, you can enjoy reading Gandhi. And definitely, I am very happy that um, if we can organize some workshops, as uh, our Gopal Vishnupi, he said, to organize some workshops, so let's have some students to travel them for a wonderful event, perhaps. He is talking here about the huge sponsor, one candidate, he was in care, sponsor another student. He is in the larger number. And perhaps the matter of the appeals, so many industries out there, each industry can sponsor one candidate. He is not a big deal for the performance of the higher industry. I think at that time, if we operate, if there is a delegation for that huge summit in South Africa, 10 people, 10 students coming from this university, some faculty members coming from the university, I feel it will be a great success. Don't think about one student who is too small from the university to get a station this university has. So I will work together. I am extremely happy to be part of the academic effort. I am so grateful to you for the giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Prasad Jari. That was very invigorating and very touched on the aspect, especially with your very brief profile of Dr. Christian Barto, who is an eminent speaker and a Gandhi scholar, Gandhi scholar, who is from Germany. Dr. Christian Barto is an education and political scientist, closely collaborating with the three university girls in Berlin. Since 1993, and he is the president of the Gandhi Information Center, which is the Center for Research and Education on Nonviolence, the Society of Education for the Benefit of the Public, based in Berlin, Germany, and a curator of more than 20 exhibitions on nonviolent resistance for the Berlin Anti War Museums, which is on Gandhi 
Tall shirt, polo, rusting, huxley, etc. He has extensively researched on Mahatma Gandhi's correspondence with contemporaries and published several books which include biographies and monographs and also articles in, 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 uh, in Palgrave and Sage, particularly on Tolstoy, Gandhi and non-violent resistance. It was before the invitation, the very kind words and uh, uh, the soon saw that Gandhi would not live without women because a lot of his mother, not because of his supporting wife, Kastova, but also because of Mrs. Ruth Alexander, you know? You know the wife of Morris Alexander who prevented um, the assassination of Gandhi with the umbrella. So, didn't you hear about that? Well, or uh, about Sanya Shady, the other woman, picking up the spirit of those who go to prison, uh, the secretary, or, uh, you know, the, of course, you know, uh, Monday's slave, Mirabi, who was inside during his trip to Europe, or newly arrested, created the Peace Hall, East End of London, among the poor people, the institution of social work, will be less the whole thing than me with this called Myanmar, and accompanied by a great protest, Saudi Naidu, who was really a messenger of India on Nightingale, and uh, a wonderful personality. So, Actually, without women, it would be difficult for us to remember Mahatma Gandhi. But there were also other women who were really instrumental in bringing about success to Satyagraha in South Africa. And together with a good friend of mine from Tamil Nadu, Vishnu Vataraja, whose mother is Anonymous today. I uh, composed a text on the European and Canadian supporters of Mahatma Gandhi in South Africa. And um, one of some essays we co authored for publication by an Indian scholar. And you know, this is an essay on Tandi Naibu but also giving from shedding light on other European and Canadian supporters. Because without the active support of European collaborators and friends, as well as the close cooperation with the Chinese and the Tamil community in South Africa, Gandhi Satyagraha campaigns would not have succeeded. Actually, Gandhi was representing the Asian communities, called Asiatic communities in South Africa. All they would have ended in bloodshed and massacres. The Danish name would not have become synonymous with the role model for non-violent resistance. Some of you might have heard the first biography on Gandhi written by Reverend Joseph Doe. In South Africa, this biography read by your old story, I had a copy in my hand in Yasaya Polena. And uh, Gandhi made pencil, uh, Tolstoy made pencil note annotations, you know, in pencil. This, uh, biography inspired Tolstoy very much and he knew that he had to pass his legacy on because Tolstoy was the representative of the tradition of non-violent non-cooperation inspired objectives, conscientious objectives all over the world, among them Gandhi and Kalenbach in South Africa. Kalenbach was the German Jewish architect friend 
with whom he built up the first soil farm. But also there is, uh, in addition to these Jewish assistants and secretaries, uh, Henry Solomon, Leon Pollard, Louis Walter Rich, Hermann Kallenbach, and Sandra Schlesien, there is a very poor William Penn Fogel and his wife, Elizabeth J. Fogel, and Gabriel I. Isaac, who are unknown names to you maybe, but Gabriel I. Isaac was a Jew, an English Jew, a jeweler, a practicing vegetarian associated with the Johannesburg vegetarian restaurant. He was sometimes a member of the uh, Phoenix Settlement, he traveled to collecting subscriptions and advertisements for Indian opinion and was ever ready to be of use in the journal and to the And in 1908, he offered to become nominal owner of Satyagraha shops, following the government's policy of auctioning their goods. In June 1909, he was sent by Gandhi to Delagoa to assist Satyagraha as being deported to India. He went to jail as Satyagrahi during the Great March of 1930. But particularly the four girls, the OGL, are an almost forgotten example of essential European support for the Indian community in the Satyagraha struggle because the couple demonstrated a deep understanding of how to close the gap between the two communities who were supposed to be separated because of their ethnicities according to the hubris of racist and segregationist ideologies inside the Boer and British colonialist mindset. The Committee of European Sympathizers was founded in 1908 by Albert Cartwright, the editor, then editor of the Transvaal Leader. He was the first member of the Progressive Party actively to espouse the Indian cause, and he played a decisive role in bringing about the famous compromise of January 1908. The chairman, William Hoskin, was a rich and prominent member of the Free Union and Transvaal Legislature, and at one time a leading member of the Progressive Party. His mediatory efforts in the later stages of the 1908 campaign were not inconsiderable. By 1910, his sympathies had become more active, and he wrote a letter to Smuts supporting the Gandhi and the Indians in their demands. Now, well, this was a quote, and uh, you find it in the collective works of Martin Lutheran, written by John. And the next one will be also text by Gandhi, so don't be astonished. Mrs. Fogel conducted classes for Indian women and organized Indian bazaars in Johannesburg. She, as also her husband, the draper, took key interest in the cause of Indians. Mr. Gandhi said that the community was grateful to Mrs. Fogel and Mrs. Lessing for their noble work among the Indian women of the Transvaal. The work among Indian ladies had been inaugurated by Mrs. Pollard, the wife of the secretary, Henry S. Pollard, and was continued by Mrs. Fogel and Mrs. Schlesing, Sonia Schlesing, the other secretary. Women's meetings were held regularly. Mrs. Fogel's Indian Bazaar was held once in 1910 and again in 1911. Another bazaar held under the auspices of the Indian Women's Association it was set to take place in May 1913. The Transvaal Women's Association itself is one of the important products of the Passive Resistance Struggle. It represents, it is true, only a few Indian women of Johannesburg. They are mostly, if not at all, if not all, passive resistance families. The association owes its present activity to the genius of Mrs. Fogel, assisted by Miss Schlesing. Mrs. Fogel has been occupied 
with the organization of the bazaar practically for the past 12 months. All her spare time has been devoted to the work. Under her tuition and guidance, our girls have been preparing the work which the public of Johannesburg would have the opportunity of appreciating or criticizing. The Transvaal Women's Association contains in it the material for a structure of the highest importance to the Indians of South Africa. And our sisters in India, by their thoughtful assistance, will have done not a little to help on the structure. All honor to them and to the passive resistance movement, which has made possible such a harmonious blending as we notice in the composition and the activity of the Transvaal Women's Association and the Indian Ladies Community. Uh, Indian Ladies Committee. This great bazaar, um, this great bazaar, They organized the Great Bazaar. Yeah. And the Great Bazaar, what can you wrote? The Great Bazaar is the coping stone to the work done by you. During our darkest hours, when those who were near and dear to us were in prison, you and Miss Stacy, by unremitting zeal, assisted us in no small measure to forget our misery. You have indeed been a true sister to us, and so long as the European community contains women like you, we need not despair of seeing the two divisions of the empire living in peace and friendliness. Interesting, the school that Tolstoy found had been enriched by Mrs. Fogel's practical skills and teaching, free of charge in complete identification with Tolstoy's principle of bread labor. Quote, no school fees are charged. Manual training is combined with mental, but the greatest stress is laid on character building. No corporal punishment is inflicted, but every endeavor is made to draw out the best that is in the boys by an appeal to their hearts and their reason. They are allowed to take the greatest freedom with their teachers. Indeed, the establishment is not a school, but a family of which all the pupils are persuaded by example and precept to consider themselves a part. For three hours in the morning, the boys perform some kind of manual labor, preferably agricultural of the simplest type. They do their own washing, and are taught to be perfectly self-reliant in everything. There is too attached to the school a sandal-making class. There is also a sewing class, the latter under the supervision of Mrs. Fogel, who so successfully organized the Indian Bazaar, held under the auspices of the Indian Women's Association last year. I need hardly mention that Mrs. Fogel's work is a labor of love. No paid servants are kept on the farm in connection either with the school or the kitchen. Hermann Kallenbach, a German-born Jewish carpenter and architect who had emigrated from East Prussia, became invaluable for the effectiveness of Gandhi's Satyagraha campaigns in South Africa. Kallenbach met Gandhi in 1904 and was deeply influenced by his concept of Satyagraha, not only as a resistance method, but also as a moral philosophy. In 1910, Kallenbach donated a sizable farm for Gandhi's cause and named it as Tolstoy Farm. Kallenbach's resilience and engagement with the British police during the epic march of 1930 is a testament to his deep understanding and conviction towards the nonviolent civil disobedience against the colonial system. Quote, 
Hermann Kalbach er prosperous, this is not Gandhi, it's just information. Hermann Kallenbach, a prosperous German architect of Johannesburg with a vein of other worldliness, who, when challenged to a duel by a folk trust European for his Indian sympathies, declined, saying that he had accepted the religion of peace. Himself, a Satyagrahi, he gave his 1,100-acre Tolstoy farm near Johannesburg for the maintenance of Satyagrahi's families, taught on his farm, carpentry, gardening, and sandal making, the last of which he had learned at a Trappist monastery, Marianne Hill. Associated in dietetic experiments with Gandhiji, who describes him as, quote, a man of strong feelings, wide sympathies, and childlike simplicity. Quote by Gandhi. Gandhi honored the memory of Nagapen, Narayan Sami, and Valyama, the three martyrs who died in the passive resistance fight by a ceremonial unveiling of memorial tablets erected in Brahm Fontaine symmetry. Nagapan Padayachi or Swami Nagapan Padayachi, 1891 to 1909, 80 years, is a South African Satyagraha martyr from India. Nagapan Padayachi was an Indian born in Manila. Duturai in Manila, Duturai district of Tamil Nadu. Involved in Satyagraha with Mahatma Gandhi from 1909. He was sentenced to 10 days hard labor on 21st of June 1909 during the first Satyagraha campaign. Akapan was about 18 years old when he was sentenced on 21st June 1909 to the three pounds or 10 days imprisonment with hard labor. After spending a night at the fort, he was made to walk to the Hupsky Road prison camp 26 kilometers away. He was discharged from the camp on 13th June and died on 6th July of double pneumonia and resultant heart failure. His body was full of bruises and wheels. Fellow prisoners reported that he had been physically abused in prison by at least one warden and that his illness was neglected by the prison authorities and he was still expected to carry out his hard labor sentence. This ultimately led to his death. Despite all the evidence, the official ex inquiry exonerated the prison officials and rejected the allegations of the appalling, appalling conditions in the camp. In 1914, Mohandas Gandhi unveiled memorial tablet to Padayanchi as for Gandhi. They were inspirations like a lighted match to dry fuel. A. Narayan Swami was a hawker in Johannesburg. He served with the British troops in a non combatant capacity during the Anglo Boer War and was granted residence in the Transvaal. He went to jail in 1908 and 1909 and was illegally deported to India in 1910. He returned to Durban with 82 other deportees. He was not allowed to land in Durban and had to go from the port on the deck of the ship. He died on board at Fuda Roman on 16 October 1910 and was buried in De La Loire. Tilayani Vayaman, 1898 to 1940, was a South African Tamil girl who worked with Mahatma Gandhi in her early years. She was born to R. Monaswami Udalia and Mangalam, a young immigrant couple from a small village called Tilayadi in Maria Duturai district in India to Johannesburg, the old city of South Africa, to work for their way out of difficulty. She was from Sengulta Kaikola Mudaya community. On 15 July 1914, three days before he left uh, South Africa, Gandhi attended the unveiling of the gravestones of Nagapan and Vayama in the Brahm Fontaine Cemetery in Johannesburg. Vayama and her mother Mangalam joined the second batch of Transvaal women who went to Natal in October 1930 to explain the inequity of the three pound tax to the workers and persuade them to strike. Vayaman's father, Arunuswami Muralia, 
owner of a fruit and vegetable shop in Johannesburg and a satyagrahi in Transport was recovering from an operation. They visited different centers and addressed meetings. They were sentenced in December to three months with hard labor and sent to the Magdeburg prison. Wayama fell ill soon after her conviction, but refused an offer of early release by the prison authorities. She died shortly after release on 22nd of February 1940. So um, I don't want to uh, continue for too long now. I just want to refer to to Tammy Naidu uh, from Mauritius. Mauritius born Tammy Naidu, a Tammy cottage contractor who was uh, scribed by Gandhi as Lion Life, who was instrumental in this, bringing about the success of the Epic March in 1913. He had a wife and five children who had been in the colony for five years. What was to happen if he were deported? And was going to take care? Who was going to take care? care of his wife and children. So actually this is just to document uh, on the one hand the uh, uh, crucial importance of women, not just wife and children, but also you know, the associations uh, of women from the Tamil community particularly but um, from the Indian community in general, uh, and also the female European supporters who worked together and organized bazaars to keep up the Satyagra struggle and bring it to a success. Unwritten story so far. And uh, also, this, um, this, prince, this principle of communal harmony is documented in Gandhi's words. Um, when he spoke at a Tamil meeting presided by Tamil Naidu and attended by Kasto and others, then he expressed that of all the different sections of the Indian community, the Tamils had borne the brunt of the struggle, and that the largest number of deaths from the passive resistance came from the Tamil community. Gandhi had been crediting Tamil Naidu with utmost recognition and praises throughout these years gave an ultimate tribute to him by showcasing his renouncement of his children as a supreme act of love towards his country, while he was sensing division among various communities. Then he said, which is worthy of presenting below in its original form, they had sometimes, as every other section of the community had, jealousies amongst themselves. They had petty jealousies, not in connection with the struggle, but in matters which had nothing to do with the struggle. All those petty jealousies and differences, Gandhi hoped would go and they would rise higher still in the estimation of themselves and of those who had all grew to know them and the depths of character which they have. That also, as all sections of the Indian community had, not only those jealousies, but sometimes many bickeries also, and petty quarrels. He felt these also should be removed, especially from their midst, because they have shown themselves so fit to give themselves to the motherland. And here, of course, it was the Tamil who had given his four sons to be trained as servants of the Lord. The old Muslim Mrs. Naya knew exactly what they had done. They had surrendered all the right to those children for life, and they could not possibly do anything to advance the material well-being, but had always remained servants of the It was no joke. Yet Mr. and Mrs. Naidu had certainly done this. Could not repeat to them too strongly that they of all sections should rip themselves, they should rip themselves of all those figurines, petty jealousies and quarrels amongst themselves. So Satyada is an incitation done by the Anaiden, as uh, summarized in this text by my friend Dr. Romney Hamiti, and particularly Vishnu Raj and Dr. Romney Jenna. He think uh, uh, a second lecture would be on the influence of the Kula tradition on young 
So I'm happy to, um, to be able to speak to you and refer to this um, important invaluable women's sport for running in South Africa. And this exactly what I think was actually to be here at this wonderful women's university. Thank you very much. Look at the time you can have with the people on the gas. Can someone help me in passing the mic to the audience? So it need not be only the students, the staff also can be back. There are three people on the gas, of course. The Gandhian values are related to them. This is happened in the history. I believe is it anything beyond the books or say understanding of you where we can throw some light on that, probably some of my queries are to kick start people are people with people of the questions so that we can uh, One question is regarding the partition. Partition of India. Gandhi was no option accepting the partition of the country. And uh, this decision was taken by people, the national leaders, accepting Gandhi. With Lord Mount Party, Nehru, Mawlana Nazar, all these people took the decision the and the decision was brought to the notice of Martin. So he said, I have become, I have been alone. What was he doing today? I have become alone as well done. He lamented. And at one point he said, So I have wanted to live for 155 years. Gandhi wanted to live for 125 years. He said, Now I don't have any wish to live. He said, What are you doing? Everything that I am asking for, what I am looking for, I am not, my words are not accepted. Things are going in a different way. He was not happy. So that's how actually in India's partition. So Gandhi is unfair, it is totally erroneous, it is unfair. When you are talking about Madhavan Bhakti, the center is no Madhavan. The question is, is it by any standards, any human standards in the civil society, is it the right thing to kill a person? And the fear saint, the fear father of the nation. It is a heinous crime and it is shameful that he argues in the court of law, defending, saying that why he has assassinated Martin. What evidence has he given in the court? What is the partition of the country as one reason? And Gandhi demanded 55 crores to be given to Pakistan. And then it was because of Gandhi, Hindu religion, Hindu society he is getting disturbed. Some reason like that he is doing. Right? But is it a fact? There have been an attempt on Mahatma Gandhi's life at least ten times. The attempt on Gandhi's life on 3rd of January where the assassins could be successful, that was one. But earlier to that, at least ten times there was an assassination attempt. Ten years before, also there was an assassination attempt. And this very Nautila was also part of that. 10 years before 1948. The question is, when the party issue was never there at the time, the 50 was issue was not there, why did Nandala Bhatse attempt to pay Mahatma Gandhi 10 years before 1948? So if you think that you can speak lies, speak in lies 100 times, you can make the truth, it is really very really unfortunate. You know what is happening is, Total hope of the of the river, a falsehood repeated again and again to convince people that Gandhi was killed for a genuine reason, absolutely no genuine reason, is extremely a narrow minded, cold blooded murder. That is very clear about that. And we never encourage, we never support 
it is inside the neck. But everybody doesn't matter. If somebody is to be killed, that should be done by the courts of law. When they when they release it, they should be brought to the court. Any other question? No, I just uh, wanted to give uh, some kickstart. So that's why I thought uh, I would uh, do questions so that our audience is also trying to make a uh, good clarification. Uh, as I have given a lot of uh, reply to the question, why can't Gandhi stop about the of between between India and Pakistan? The division between India and Pakistan happened in 1947, the division, and also the living is still continuing now, even now, continue. So when there was a proposal to divide uh, the undivided India into India and Pakistan, Gandhi offered Jinnah to become the prime minister of the United India. He told Father, he told to Jena, saying that, uh, Mr. Jena, you will be the Prime Minister for the entire uh, India, undivided India. But, and uh, this was first, this, uh, this, but uh, uh, unfortunately, this again, Lord, Lord Mark, uh, Mount Patton was also informed about this. But the Indian leaders, including Jawaharlal Nehru, they opposed the time. They informed the mom pattern, saying that <coughs> don't do like that. If you do, do like that, uh, uh, we will us in India. We don't, we don't agree for that. Let it be divided. But let the Jinnah will not be the finest for the United India. So, it so happened. It went against the division of India and uh, the Pakistan went against the wishes of uh, Mahatma Gandhi. So you know that uh, on the first independence day, August 1947, and uh, Gandhi was not in Delhi, when the independence day celebrations were, uh, they were going on in a very pompous way, then, but uh, Gandhi was not in Delhi, but he was getting a place called Nawakari, attending the Hindu Muslim uh, rites. So Hindus are killing Muslims and Muslims were killing Hindus, and there was a great chaos. And Gandhi was attending that uh, chaos, and then he was attending the Hindu Muslim rites to stop it. And he was invited to attend the, to come to Delhi and attend the first uh, Independence Day celebrations of 1947. And uh, the emissaries were sent to Gandhi and uh, to be invited to Delhi. But Gandhi said, No, I don't want. I am more interested uh, in the welfare of these Hindus and Muslims. I want to stop the fight between India and the killings between India and the Hindus and Muslims. So he did not come for to Delhi to enjoy the first independent day celebrations. So he was quite against. And the person that has said very really rightly that uh, Gandhi felt that the United India is divided into India and uh, uh, Pakistan. It was nothing but a division of his body, his body. So this is my uh, some of the observations submitted to this uh, audience. Thank you. Thank you, sir. What needs to be mentioned here is how Gandhi responded when violence was inflicted on him or when he had to face insult and humiliation. Um, as sir was saying, Gandhi was uh, in Calcutta actually on the day independence was announced uh, to prevent any violence between the Hindus and the Muslims. But in January 1947, when he went to uh, Bengal, let's Bengal, to prevent the rights, uh, I mean, after the rights had taken place, he wanted to tour all the villages uh, close to Noakali, and uh, one of the villages, which was predominantly populated by the Muslims, 
they didn't want Gandhi ji to come to their village. And Gandhi ji at the age of 77, without wearing any chapels, he was walking uh, through the forest. You can imagine what the landscape must have been then, uh, walking through the forest to reach the village, despite the disrecommendation made by all these well wishers around. He was firm that we should complete his walk. Um, he was very clear about his mission. And what the people of that village did was, they just, uh, you know, uh, spread shit and uh, glass pieces on his path. And uh, that was around 6 o'clock when he was walking. When Gandhiji discovered that, you and I, if we were to be in that place, I don't know how we would react. But what Gandhiji did was, he just took a bottle of coconut, he just went down and picked up all the shit and he threw it away from his path and he walked forward. And that, I think, is something uh, really, very really inspiring. And we have a great deal to learn from such incidents which uh, you know, uh, have happened in young people's lives. So this is something I just wanted to say. Thank you. Like all of us would have risen uh, to his many of his speeches uh, during the uh, uh, freedom struggle. Um, so, on the contrary to the, his personality, his puny figure, and the, the only single piece though he, which he used to wear, a man of simplicity, uh, which he practiced, his voice is so magical, which attracts the people to unite all over India and fight for the big struggle. You know? So this uh, this uh, voice, which is so commanding and so in depth, uh, which always wonders to me, yeah. So I just wanted to share this point. So nothing to do with the uh, personality, you know. Uh, so this is what I wanted to share. Thank you. <laughs> Have some confidence. Self dependence. Don't be imitating others. Gandhi raised the question the kind of education you are following is only creating a group of imitators. And a group of imitators cannot make a nation. This is what Gandhi said. Therefore, Gandhi's advice to young people is to have original. Original thinking, seeing truth as truth itself. Don't be influenced by what others say, but you should learn. Even if somebody says you listen to them, you should verify whether it is truth or not. So it is that kind of an attitude that will make you strong. Then on the social side, we should treat everybody as equal to us. Again, they should look down upon us, now we should look down somebody. So we have to create a society based on equality, both economic equality, social equality, and also we should bring down moral foundations of truth and knowledge. That's how Gandhi will look to the place of Gandhi in their generation. First of all, I would like to say yes, it's just a um, combination of sobriety in Gandhi's voice. When he is speaking, we can listen to the sobriety when he is giving a spiritual message for this on the Columbia Records um, release. Um, he was giving a religious, sending a religious text as a message for, for the English folk, for, for the Britons, and his voice was sober. He spoke about religion as sobriety. And he, he wanted to capture the hearts, a warm, warm-hearted nature in his speeches. Um, it's obvious and surely he doesn't want to have applause, he doesn't want to have the claps of hands, he wanted to capture the hearts of his listeners. And then he wanted the listener to follow his uh, way of thought, just follow his view steps of God, nothing more, and think about it, reflect about it. 
And then um, there's a question of Philip, very interesting, this combination of social work and social sciences. This is society in Macron in India, this, um, this uh, inter interrelation between social work and social science, social services, not what we say social service, the concept of service. Um, and my appeal to you is just to um, not to build this upon a volunteer system, but uh, it should be solidly paid with a good income uh, to enable people to serve, to follow their conscience by serving others non violently. This is what I appeal to you and bring and uh, keep together social sciences and social services. This is uh, social reform. This is one thing. And the other thing is, the third thing is very important. We just spoke about uh, Gandhi centers or Gandhi study centers. I think there should, in each university college course, as you in India, also other countries of the world, there should be a, a library nucleus as an archive with a, with a chance to meet each other in a, a round circle and to listen to lectures and have interaction in a, in a atmosphere where uh, you, you find uh, you feel comfortable because there is no hierarchy. So this is important to get this uh, thought of small interactive centers with a solid archive, with a professional archivist uh, and a library of uh, literature uh, written by Gandhi and his friends and also secondary literature. And then I would uh, like to uh, conclude with um, encouraging you to develop the, the concept of peace education, want of character building, your leisure time, uh, silence, uh, silent uh, periods of time, um, freedom to, for, for all pupils and students to follow their own orientation, each individual. So, not individuals, of course, but individuals. So, of course, each and every one should follow her or his conscience. This is one thing. And the last is, please uh, support researchers, a few researchers all over the world, who are doing um, more or less pioneering work just to find out something new. Because they collect the works of Mahatma Gandhi, which, which have been published. Uh, but, Yes, now, uh, in the digital version, the Gandhi Heritage Portal, that we like the version of Gandhi Collected Works, this is a model, model for, if we say, those who publish the King Papers. And only seven or fourteen volumes published, so this race. Mankind longs for this. We want to see you complete papers of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. within a few years. It should be priority. You want the same journey for the long published the works of Karl von Wieselski, the German one, in decades, and we can be grateful for those who took their efforts to do this research work, go to various libraries, collect all these uh, writings, and Wieselski was full of praise from Madani in 1939, and that is uh, daughter. He was a prisoner in concentration camp in Germany. And we received as a prisoner by the Nobel Peace Prize after a three year long international campaign. And last, the very last uh, notion is I, we created an exhibition on the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. It's called Rap and Roses. So it, this might be of interest because it's uh, particularly about women's activities and thoughts for the peace and justice. And I think this might inspire you. And also show it. It's uh, completely without very And just uh, if you like to show this exhibition to the university, we would be happy to send you the files. And it would be certainly inspiring to meet those women and women who are actually following the same lines as also a young man. Thank you. Thank you, the audience and as well as the panelists. Now, over to the President for the next proceedings.
Thank you, sir. And we come to the fact end of this uh, event, and we also acknowledge sublime note that the students have asked that the resource persons have themselves said we should be the way we are. We need to be the way we are. And also our uh, visitor, he has also talked about maintaining sobriety. That's very important to house the sobriety. The need to archive the teachings of Gandhi. Need to think about Gandhi, think about peace education, conduct research in that particular area. So these are some of the things that we end up with as we had a very long morning. And a quick uh, session of uh, distribution of momentos for our uh, resource persons. And I just share that quickly. And all in the team. He couldn't be here because of uh, so many other uh, administrative works. So, but however, our traditions are with us. I thank for great inspiration to them. Thank you, sir. I also express my sincere thanks to Dr. Prasad Varun for uh, really key students for making your presence here. Uh, and thank you for being with us uh, today because without you, this program is not a success. And uh, I will be failing in my duty if I don't express my special thanks to Dr. Neeraja from Women's Studies, who is always with me for any kind of uh, uh, help when I need uh, help during such occasions. And I thank, uh, my, I sincerely thank my own research scholars who have been with me throughout in the preparation for the, in the making the arrangements for this program. And a special thanks to Ms. Varghese, the first year student who has also joined our Inter Scholar to Saini Gandhi's favorite song. And uh, even though I, I may have missed out some day, but uh, my special thanks are to everyone who is present here and who has contributed directly or indirectly to this uh, uh, to this uh, occasion. And Dr. Revati, our academic consultant, also was the one who was behind this PPT presentation too. Thank you, Revati. And yes, I thank 